Do you think there's any reason they gravitate towards that, or just kind of one of those, those things? Well, if I had to guess on a reason, well, I would think that there would be no reason, uh, you know? Um, but if I had to guess a reason, um, sours are light in body, generally lower in alcohol, even lower in alcohol than the beers that they have been drinking. At least maybe around the same alcohol percentage. I think low bitterness uh, is also a big thing. I think a lot of people, since IPAs are so big, a lot of people who are like your macro beer drinkers know somebody who likes craft beer, but that person typically drinks IPAs. So they taste a, a craft beer, and it's an IPA, and it has this this uh, bitterness that's off-putting. Yeah. Um, but the sour beer is like, yeah, they're, they're sour, but they're not, they don't have that, uh, like a pungent or resiny hot bitterness. And I think that's one thing that they... That they don't like about craft IPAs, and they think that the whole craft brew industry brews beer. Like that. Just getting out of East End Brewery right now. Uh, had a very solid time in there. Uh, chatted with Chris uh, probably about an hour. Uh, had a really good conversation about beer. Uh, very. A lot of cool things to, to share with me. Um, off camera, he also noted uh, a few things he thought were, were promising about the beer industry, which I, or the crap beer industry, which I thought were pretty cool to hear, uh, particularly the move of a lot of craft brewers to the suburbs, um, giving it more of a local, hyper specific flavor. Uh, the fact that more college people are uh, starting to drink more good beers. Uh, like myself, I was drinking uh, uh, Natty Lights back in the day, so it's a promising sign for the next generation. Uh, and also just the fact that there's a lot of experimental strains out there. Um, that the industry is continuing to go in a lot of cool directions.
Right. Yeah, do well, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Uh, no problem. Uh, so you, you worked at Rock Bottom Brewery. Yeah, I worked there for a little over two years now. Oh, of yeah. Um, you kind of been interested in the beer industry for a while. Um, I want to call myself like an aficionado, but definitely I'm a big fan of beer. I probably got my IPAs a few years ago, and I've just kind of run away with it. Always a big fan of the IPAs. It's so something a little more citrusy is usually my taste. But uh, okay. at Rock Bottom, we have one of my favorite beers, the um, the Uppity Jag Off. It's one of my favorite beers for a long time. Oh, wow. We, uh, not because I worked there. Just ever since I started there, it's, just, it's a great beer. It's a nice citrusy start to a good floral finish. It's a nice refreshing beer, but also a good classic American IPA. It's just been one of my favorites. It's been, it's been really good. Well, uh, kind of lead towards that. Do you have other styles of beers? Like um, I lean towards the IPA mostly. Depends on the weather. Usually, I like a, a good a multi beer, but something little, that's multi a little bit lighter. And then um, if it's really hot, like a nice nice ninety degree weather today. Something something a little more citrusy. Usually, I like a little wheat. But today, it's not good. The margarita it's a little too warm for that. Yeah, <laughs> so seriously. a little more citrusy to it, but it's refreshing. But yeah, usually, usually beer or whiskey would usually beer for me. Hey, done. Can't go wrong there. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chad. Hey, no yeah, problem at all, man. Ended up getting the Wicked Wizard. Thanks, this is uh, quite good. Yeah. Uh, very refreshing, crisp. I was able to make that there. Very cool, very cool brewery. Uh, our name is kind of a nod to Pittsburgh's history um, because we are historically like a, you know, a cinder covered city. You know, like yeah. we, we were all raised on stories about like the steel mills and how it used to just cover the streets in uh, dust and soot and cinder. And we think that because this city is on its way up, we we want to give them something to kind of reflect that. We feel that our brightest and um, best beers are still ahead, and we think the same thing for the city. So we we wanted to you know put together a place that's kind of like a, a gathering. A watering hole of some sort and um, a brew pub and we want to give out beer that reflects the city and, and how it's still growing and moving on up and up and we want to reflect we want to give beer that reflects that i love our check the game we just kicked it last week it was um a New England saw IPA. Um, it was really mango and peachy on the front of it, and then it was brewed with white jasmine tea, so you get like a lot of that floralness um, at the end. Not super over bitter, um, not super happy, like really, like a really nice juicy, flavorful IPA. But um, yeah, we just got rid of last week. Our Celestial Shore was the first beer we put in cans. It was a peach tart shake IPA. Oh, wow. I'm getting. Wow. More and more, I get really interested in like kind of funky IPAs. So yeah, um, it was really good. I have a couple cans of it still at home. And then right now, I love our guava whipper. We've done a series of Berliner vices with different fruits, and um, I think the guava is my favorite so far. What about the guava makes you your favorite? Um, it's like the fruit is a little bit more. Uh, noticeable. The guava puree is a little more noticeable than um, the mango we've done in the past, and the plum, and the passion fruit. Like you can like get guava a ton in the the aroma, and then um, there's a. I mean, it's a sour beer, so it's gonna be sour. But like, you, I think you get more fruit out of it than you have in our past whippers. I almost like how you almost have like just like a few beers on your menu. It's like yeah, you have to choose. Well, we have we have six today. Next week we'll have ten. It changes. Oh, right, right. It changes all the time. Um, we are just, we're trying to brew as much and as much as possible and as fast as possible. <laughs> you know, people come in, they drink the beer, they really like it, they take some of it home, and that's awesome. It just means that we have to make sure they got something to come back to.
kind of what he's doing. Um, Paul has his own schedule. He, I, I can't yeah. really speak to what he has planned, like when it comes to like seasonal stuff. But um, you know, if we get a batch of really good coffee in that he wants to put in a beer, he'll probably make like a coffee beer around that time. But yeah, we don't really have like a seasonal list as of right now. I know like the beers we have on right now like are very. They're nice and easy to be drank in the summertime and the springtime. So, yeah. um, being only open for six months, it's kind of like we've been brewing all kinds of beer. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, the food's awesome. There's not one thing in our food menu I don't like. No, it's I, like <laughs> rare. I've never been to, I never worked in a restaurant where I loved the whole menu. Really? I had not yeah. you say that was true here. I, I, like, I, literally, I love everything on the menu. Depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> Favorite thing on the menu? Um, I love our fried chicken sandwich. It's oh, made with okay. thigh rather than breast, so it's juicier, thicker. Um, our diner burger is probably one of the best burgers I've ever had. Oh, really? Um, I love our Caesar that's on right now. The, the asparagus dish is really good. The lamb is like out of this world. Honestly, like whatever kind of mood you come in, like if you just want something small okay. or like if you want like a hearty sandwich, we have something on the menu. Jeez, right. I always recommend the chicken sandwich for people on our first time in because it's a good size sandwich. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's good now. Yeah, I had uh, I had the Romanti Brothers pastrami yeah? earlier today. So you're full, you're set. It was at 4 o'clock, so <laughs> I... Uh, uh, I definitely doubt for another sure. type of sandwich. Yeah, we have like small bar sets that, you know, a table of eight can order a few. We have, um, it was like a family style size section as well, um, like for the table. So, I mean, like, we, have, we have a little bit of everything, which is cool. Waking up today, Pittsburgh, nice morning. I think it's nice out. Uh, ready to hit the road. Uh, say farewell to an awesome city. Had an awesome time here. Uh, excited to kind of put this, this thing together. I think I got a lot of cool footage, talked to some awesome people, uh, went to some really cool places. Uh, you know, great in all those ways, unexpected ways. Uh, Awesome trips can be fun. Uh, before going, I would like to, uh, you know, toast uh, Anthony Bourdain. Uh, obviously, um, big inspiration to many people, and uh, kind of inspired me to do this trip. I wasn't sure I was going to do. Uh, so here's to you, Tony. Favorite, uh, favorite Boston athlete? Boston athlete? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer. <laughs> it would probably be... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe David Ortiz? David Ortiz, Big yeah. Bobby, okay. I have uh, a lot of respect for the Red Sox. <laughs> nice, it's good to hear. Uh, to, be, to be fair, favorite Pittsburgh athlete? Alright, uh, my favorite? It's, a, it's probably a hard question. Yeah. I, are there any good Pittsburgh athletes? Oh, there's <laughs> only a few, I guess. No. Juju Schuster right now is my favorite. He's oh, he's great. hilarious. And he's so young and just like yeah. super like fun and passionate about the game. Yeah. I met, no, yeah. I met Antonio Brown last year. He was a really cool down earth guy. You met him? Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, that's yeah. cool. He was really cool. Um...